is a rather different kind of Hyundai i20. This third generation version has changed in terms of style and sophistication, with mild hybrid engine tech and the kind of media and safety features you'd usually expect to find on a much larger car. At the same time though, quite a few recognisably sensible character traits from previous models still remain. It's now reasonable these days to expect much more of a Super Mini, and in many respects, this car can now really deliver on that brief. Set off in this third generation i20, and the first thing that you'll notice is that everything's so light and easy to use. Primarily the electric steering, but also if you've opted for this stick shift, the clutch and gear shift action too. Even better, this car is easier to see out of front and rear than just about any super mini that we can think of, which of course makes things simple in the city and perfect for parking. On top of that, the willing little one litre TGDI petrol unit you have to have in the mainstream versions of this model goes about its business with plenty of pulling power and a cheerful three cylinder thrum. All of which would certainly endear this car to the kind of elderly or early driver customers who often chose previous generation i20s. But this Hyundai needs a broader range of talents than that if it's going to increase its share of the small hatch segment. So uh, its carryover chassis has been stiffened, uh, drive modes have been added, and the core one litre engine, which is offered in 100 PS and 120 PS forms, has been given electrified mild hybrid tech. That's supposed to deliver a slight mid-range overtaking boost. To be frank, the benefits of this added 48 volt technology are difficult to discern both on the move and on the balance sheet. Uh, this 100 PS units WLTP returns, 55.4 MPG and 115 grams per kilometer aren't that much improved from before. And some of the improvement that has been delivered may actually be coming from the new IMT, Intelligent Manual Transmission, which uh, decouples the engine from the gearbox after the driver releases the accelerator. Uh, that allows the car to coast for greater economy. A 7DCT automatic is available as an alternative. Uh, Hyundai now offers also the Wild i20N hot hatch version of this model, which has a range of crackerjack drive modes and uses a 1.6 litre four cylinder turbo petrol unit that's capable of 62 in just 6.7 seconds on the way to 143 miles an hour. You can imagine an owner of a more typical i20 feeling all that sort of thing is rather silly though, but it does at least prove that Hyundai is serious about more sophisticated engineering for this i20. A decent step forward has certainly been made in that regard with this third generation model. Hyundai is clearly on a mission to banish dull design from its product portfolio. We've already seen that in recent times from the Tucson and the Ionic 5, and the point is emphasized here again by a third generation i20, which looks nothing like either of its predecessors and is all the better for it. Particularly here in profile, a perspective which delivers this wedge-shaped look, complete with slashes, contrasting colour and this rather unique swept-up design around the C and D pillars. The front end too is all about angles and attitude. Uh, the black grille is a great deal more overt than before and on most variants uh, it now gets flanked by these piercing LED headlights with upper sections framed by tick-shaped daytime running light strips. Arguably even more interesting is the rear end treatment which features these claw shaped lamps that are LED illuminated on most models and they come connected by this central strip that aims to emphasize the bodywork's 30 millimeter increase in width. So time to see how adventurous Hyundai's been with the design inside the cabin. Well, it's certainly a step forward from the cheap feeling, rather basic cabins which have characterized this model line in the past. Uh, the sculptural fascia design helps with its smart horizontal blades which stretch across the dash. And Hyundai's the first super mini maker to standardize a digital instrument cluster right across the range. Uh, this 10.25 inch screen offers colored virtual dials and a customizable center section. The centre console display it's paired with will be either 8 inches or, as in this case, 10.25 inches in size, depending on the trim level you've selected. Uh, this larger monitor brings something of a big car feel to this ambitious little super mini with its Blue Link telematics and Hyundai live traffic services. 
Uh, some of the plastics used around the cabin do feel a bit scratchy and brittle, but it's all well put together by the Turkish factory and it seems built to last. The seats are reasonably comfortable too, and there's also plenty of storage space. Right, time to move to the rear. Access isn't quite as good as it was with the previous generation model because of this lower roof height, but the doors do open nice and wide. Once inside, you'll find that this Hyundai has as much rear seat space for legs and knees as you could reasonably expect in this class. Headroom isn't quite so noteworthy, that's thanks to the tapering rear roof line, but the wider exterior that we referenced earlier on and the relatively low central transmission tunnel uh, now means it's a bit more realistic to take a trio of passengers back here if you absolutely had to, although this uh, raised central cushion won't do much for the comfort of the unfortunate middle occupant. Let's finish this section with a look in the boot. Lift the hatch and you're greeted with one of the more accommodating luggage areas uh, in this segment. 352 litres in size, that's 26 litres larger than before. One day a super mini maker will offer the flexibility of either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 seat back split, but that day hasn't yet come. So there's just this conventional 60-40 split backrest and that lowers to reveal an 1165 litre total capacity. There's something old and something new here. Some of the old virtues that have always characterized Hyundai's products remain, some welcome, some not so much. In the plus column comes strong equipment levels, build quality, and the kind of almost unimpeachable reliability which allows the brand to offer what arguably is a class leading warranty. Perhaps a bit less welcome is the relative lack of engagement that you get at the wheel in the mainstream variants. Uh, the Koreans still have a little way to go to match class-leading Ford and VW Group Super Minis in that regard, although the crackerjack dynamics of the flagship i20N hot hatch show that Hyundai can deliver handling excellence when it chooses to. As for the new stuff, well, again, some things are welcome, some not so much. Welcome is the sharper and more dynamic styling, makes this the first design in this model line with true pavement presence and aesthetic showroom appeal. The improved standards of safety and media connectivity also fall into that plus column. And it's no mean achievement to be first in segment with the standard fitment across the range of mild hybrid engine tech and a digitalized instrument binnacle screen. We are less impressed by the significant price increase that all that technology brings with it. Although keen finance deals and strong residuals will still leave this car looking reasonable value on finance or when you take whole life costs into account. Ultimately, one statistic tells you a lot about this i20. 88% of existing owners buy another, a figure almost double that of typical rivals in the segment. Evidently then, people like it once they've tried it. And after living with one, you can see why. Certainly, it's hard to think of a Super Mini which would be easier to fit into your life than this one. Few others are more practical, better built, or as easy to drive. Of course, as we've been saying, this third generation i20, although it's vastly improved, is still far from being perfect, and your choices under the bonnet are rather limited. Really, there does need to be more than just that single one litre mainstream engine with its two outputs. We would have liked to have seen the option, for example, of the full hybrid power plant that Hyundai offers in the Kona small SUV. Overall, though, there really aren't too many cars in this class that make much more sense when you add together all the really important attributes that families look for from a Super Mini in this segment. And these are, after all, times that, more than ever, call for sensible decisions. Like purchase of an i20? Well, if you are target market for this car and you trouble yourself to get to know it a bit, it's quite possible that you might well think so.